Thank you, Tom. Is it okay if I speak uh, like this? Can you hear me at the back? Right. Okay, so um, I'm going to be quite uh, fast because uh, I, I would like to cover a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you about uh, the results of a project uh, that finished uh, a few months ago. Um, and basically the motivation was this. We found, uh, or as, as probably most of you know, uh, we want to disseminate archaeological information. Um, and the previous presentation concluded precisely with a point about this. Uh, and in addition, we wanted to get the feedback from the citizens who are uh, looking at that uh, information. And we wanted to integrate different data sets. We want to disseminate information that comes from very different places, made by different people that haven't talked to each other at all. Okay, so this was a bit of a challenge. How did we do this? Okay, uh, basically you can think of an organization producing uh, archaeological data, uh, another one, another one, another one, and we will end up with a lot of different data sets. Okay, hence the heterogeneous data sets. Uh, our aim was to somehow integrate all those into a single uh, data set, <coughs> at least as far as, as the citizens are concerned, and present that to the citizenship through a unified interface. So people using mobile phones or computers at home or whatever could browse and get to that information and perhaps give us some information back about anything. Right. So this is a bit of the, of the dream we had at the beginning. Uh, okay. Um, this had to be a proof of concept. We didn't aim to produce uh, a tool that could be usable by anyone, and we didn't aim to, on the other hand, to produce just a theory of some you know, description on paper. We wanted to create some actual software that could work as a demonstrator of this uh, infrastructure actually working. So um, I'm going to tell you quickly about the, the data sets we work with, uh, how we integrated them together, uh, how we tackle this issue through conceptual modeling uh, technologies, and finally, what kind of system we built and how users interacted with it. I know it's a lot, so I'm going to be uh, fast, okay? We started with two data sets uh, in Spain. One was created by, uh, by us, the one on the right-hand side, uh, by the institution we work with. Uh, the other one was created by some people uh, about 1,200 kilometers to the south in Andalusia. Um, describing a very different kind of archaeological situation, right? Uh, both data sets included uh, a lot of structural information uh, and, and uh, you know, um, somehow uh, structured text descriptions of sites and objects and everything, and also a lot of multimedia uh, details as well. We have lots of pictures and other multimedia elements. Um, the technologies we used were these two. Basically, we are uh, Applied CHARM, the Cultural Heritage Apps and Reference Model, which we've been working with for a, for a while already. This allows us, allowed us to, to have a, a comprehensive model of both data sets and then have specific models for each of them. I will come back to this idea later. And we use CONML as a conceptual modeling language because of its expressive power, especially in terms of uh, multilinguality, subjectivity modeling, uh, temporal modeling, etc. Okay, so uh, basically we started with CHARM, with, which is, as I said, a, a reference model, a very abstract description of what the archaeological record looks like, without making any kind of specific commitments about mm, types or uh, specific uh, kinds of things. And from CHARM we derived a model that was specific to our project, a model that addressed the very specific issues of integration, interaction with the citizenship, and getting feedback, right? And then from that model, we refine, uh, re we refine it a bit further into two different models, one reflecting or capturing the structure of the first data set, the second one reflecting the, the structure of the second one. Okay, so with this in mind, um, we have to say that these three models that we created specifically for this project are the models that, mm, in some fashion, give us the structure, the information that the citizens are going to interact with. Okay. The fact that we are using CHARM is important from a technical point of view, but it's totally invisible to the users uh, interacting with the, app, uh, with the system through the mobile application. Right. I don't uh, assume you will read that. This is just uh, a quick overview of what one of the models looks like. So this is how we created 
inf the, the knowledge uh, models of the, the data sets. This is one of them, um, ours actually. Uh, basically, I don't know if you can see that there's uh, two colors. Some boxes are green, some boxes are yellow, more or less. Well, the green ones are uh, stand for concepts that are taken straight from charm, from the standard, whereas the yellow ones are concepts we added uh, as part of the, of the refinement process, right? Okay, we used some tool sets we developed in-house to actually put this into computer form and created uh, instance models that contain all the information. Uh, you could say that we actually translated or converted the original data sets, which were in different formats. We had Excel spreadsheets, we had uh, some database records, we had uh, Word documents, everything together, and we converted it, uh, converted all the sources into a comprehensive uh, repository of information. Um, then we created a software system. Uh, for the technically inclined, uh, this is how it look, uh, what it looks like. We uh, we work with a, with a data server, in-house data server, that holds both a support database as well as two different, as the two different data sets uh, with a modeling engine, supported by a modeling engine. Uh, this is used by a web server that exposes the information to the public through a, a totally standard web service front end and also exposes an administrative uh, website for us to, you know, to monitor what citizens are doing, how information is going, uh, browse, etc. And well, this means that any any user in the world just using a, an application, a, a mobile app that can, that can be freely downloaded from uh, from the Apple Store, can connect to this uh, website. Sorry, to this web service uh, front end, and get to the information. Um, No, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what can the users do? Basically, we implemented uh, flexible search uh, features in the mobile application, so people could uh, find any uh, archaeological element either around themselves or within a specific area or of a specific category or, uh, or just by looking for a text. If you know the name of a place, you can just type it in and, and the system will give it to you. Uh, the application also implemented some mechanisms for uh, making comments, uh, rate size, rate things, uh, interaction, a sort of uh, mini Twitter, if you want, embedded within the application. Because as I said at the beginning, one of the aims of the project was to get some feedback from the citizenship about the, the information being exposed. And finally, we also implemented a feature for the users to be able to suggest missing information, right? Many times you find that the local people, you know, who are living next to a site know a lot about the site, uh, and sometimes they are able to give you some feedback about uh, what the site is uh, looking like now, uh, right now, or what kind of information is incorrect or, uh, or or just missing from the system. Okay, so this is what the application looks like. Um, it's not in English; uh, it's in Spanish. So, uh, well, that's tough. I'm sorry. Uh, I will quickly give you a. Uh, a review of what it can do. You can, uh, here you have a like, home screen showing a list of sites that are around you or are suggested by the system. You can touch one of them. Uh, you can search, for instance, this, this screen shows a search for a specific category, so only show me uh, entities of whatever category you want. If you go into one of them by touching it, you see a, a complete description, including pictures, uh, location maps, uh, textual descriptions, etc. Uh, this looks very simple, but behind the scenes, remember that what this is doing is directing the queries of the users to one data set or another, depending on what information uh, required is, integrating that and giving it back to the user as a single homogeneous uh, data set. You can, of course, uh, play with location maps, uh, click there and explore the information as you wish. Uh, I have the application on my phone, if any of you is interested later. As I said, the interesting thing of the project is not the application itself. This is just, uh, if you want, a means to develop an end, which is what I was showing before in, in previous slides. Um, after doing some interaction with users, uh, we uh, basically mm, 
Well, we wanted to interact with users in different manners, right? So first of all, as I said, we uploaded the application to the Apple Store and people downloaded it freely. Unfortunately, we didn't get that many downloads. Some people did, but uh, I mean, this was a research project. We did have very limited funds, very limited time, and the, the dissemination we did of this was, was limited as well. Right. Still, some people downloaded it and used it. Then we selected some, some uh, use groups uh, for focus testing. Uh, we sent people to the field in both, uh, in both areas, uh, up northwest, up uh, down in the south, and we did some, some field testing with users and asked them for, for explicit feedback. And thirdly, uh, we also sent some work to do, uh, some people to do some field work, interviewing uh, pilgrims en route to Santiago de Compostela and who presumably would be interested in using the application. Um, conclusions about this work was, well, uh, the technical aspects, the, the, the capability of these technologies to, inter to integrate heterogeneous data sets and federate queries is good. Uh, in that respect, we are happy with the technologies employed. Uh, they have uh, proven that they, they, they actually work. Uh, nicely when they are actually implemented in, a, in an actual uh, software application and put to work in, you know, in the real world, if you wish, outside of the lab. Um, we still need to do some improvements. Uh, we are working currently in, in some uh, very deep improvements to the modern technologies we used. I'm not going to go into this in detail, uh, but if you are interested in what kind of improvements, what kind of weaknesses we have, how we are planning to solve them, just Please let me know, and I'll be delighted to, to talk to you. Um, we got some valuable feedback from citizens, although not a lot. As I said before, this was uh, a limited <coughs> resource, a limited time project. Um, and we, well, we had uh, inevitably to end uh, up asking ourselves, how interesting is archaeology for, uh, to regular citizens, actually? I mean, we often assume people are very interested in our cultural heritage. And that is fair enough. But when we actually try to, you know, get some people to give us some time and spend some time with us uh, and, you know, uh, look at this information, give us some feedback, not everyone is openly available and willing to do it. So uh, we need to perhaps challenge us a bit more and stop assuming that everyone is going to be uh, willing to, uh, to engage in that kind of thing. I know this is a very, um, a lot of nuance can be added to this challenge, uh, and I'm also very happy to talk about it, but this is something I believe we have to do. Uh, thank you very much.